So if you're like most people, you think that going on a diet, losing weight, exercising, getting fit, doing all this good stuff for your health is going to just automatically make you feel better, look better. You're just going to have a grand old time in life. Well, it's not always correct up to be that way. We're going to talk about that today. Hi guys, welcome to my channel if you are new and welcome back if you've been around here a while. I'm Kendra, this is my channel, Kind Kendra Creates. This is where I share my weight loss journey with you. Hopefully I can help you out along the way if you're on one. I also do lots and lots of commentary centered around health, wellness, fitness, scams, and scammers. And uh, you'll learn about me along the way. So if that stuff sounds good to you, then make sure you are subscribed to my channel. All right, guys. So if you don't know, I've been on a weight loss journey now for a year, but I've been trying to lose weight for two years. So 2023 will be the third year in action, and hopefully it will be the year that I reach my ultimate goal. Now, being on a weight loss journey this long has definitely had its ups and downs, and losing weight just really isn't all what it's cracked up to be. And that's kind of like what I wanted to talk to you guys about today, because some people are under the impression that once they lose weight, everything in their life is just going to automatically be so much better. And it's not just necessarily that way. I think people have themselves convinced that if they lose weight or get in shape or whatever, that everything is just going to turn around and everything is just going to be so wonderful and great. And well, it's just not always like that. Because a lot of problems that you have on the surface, they are a lot deeper. And a lot of those issues stem from more than just your weight. So we're going to just like talk about everything, okay? So the first thing that I wanted to talk to you guys about, it is really the main thing that I am like having trouble with these days is loose skin. I know a lot of people talk about loose skin and they ask questions about like, will I get it or will I have it? And no one can ever answer that question. It's a very dependent case by case situation. So there are a lot of factors that go into place on if you're going to have loose skin or not. And I'm sure you've heard this before, but it's really mainly all up to genetics. It's up to your age, how long you've been overweight how much you're overweight. So those are really main, the main factors. Some people lose a lot of weight and they don't have any. They just bounce on back. And then some people like me, <laughs> they have a lot. Well, I wouldn't say I have like 600 pound life like loose skin, but I do have a lot. Um, and I feel like it's going to not necessarily look better when I lose weight, but I'll have less fat there. So I can really get a gauge on like what it's really looking like. Because as you're going through the process, your body just changes so much. And a lot of times you can't even really see what's going on. I know that sounds really crazy, but I'm going to talk about that too. So it's really been honestly a struggle for me. And I'm not going to show anything, but you guys have kind of like seen my arms. I've like showed them in a video or two and it may just look like fat but a lot of that is skin because I did work with a personal trainer for a couple of sessions and she talked about how she couldn't believe that my arms looked like that because I would always like cover them up and she was just like I don't see I don't I, I couldn't tell <laughs> you know and then she was like you know just because you have to be really comfortable with your personal trainer because they're going to look at your body because they're, you you know you do your form and your exercises they're looking at your body they're assessing your body like that's what they do so she was like looking at my arms and everything and like you can see like how I have like tricep muscles right and and that is one thing that I'm working towards this year. If you guys haven't like looked at my five lessons learned video from 2022, look at that video. I talk a little bit about like my goals for 2023. And one of those goals is to definitely build more muscle. So I'm doing a lot of strength training now. And that is one thing that's going to help the appearance of loose skin 
if you fill it in with muscle instead of fat, you have something to fill in the skin with. So it's going to help the appearance of it. Nothing helps major loose skin. Let me repeat that again. Nothing helps major loose skin. No peel, no potion, no cream, no elixir, no dry brushing, no none of that stuff. Please don't let people sell you stuff for your loose skin because it's not going to work. Now, I don't know if you just have a little bit, if you could change the appearance, I don't know. But I'm not talking about just a little bit. I'm talking about a lot. I have a lot. I've been obese my entire life. I've been up and down with my weight. I've been as high as nearly 400 pounds. I've been as low as what I am right now. This is literally like my lowest in my adult life. So there's nothing that can help me except for surgery. Loose skin removal surgery. Whether that be on my arms, my legs, my stomach, whatever. And I really hate that there are so many like misconceptions, ignorance around surgery when it comes to this. I am a proponent of plastic surgery. Get it. If, it, if you want it, if it makes you feel good, get it. Why not? YOLO, okay? You only get one life to live and why spend your life in a body that you're uncomfortable with, that you don't feel good in, that you can realistically change. So change it. And I just hate that so many people think that a tummy tuck is to lose weight and a tummy tuck is not to lose weight. A tummy tuck is to lose skin. You can't lose skin. It's just going to sit there. So it's definitely like, it's hard to wrap your mind around it. Now, do I feel like I look better? Like generally, it's really hard to tell. I'm going to talk about that. But I can tell, I know, like I'm smaller right? But sometimes the way that my clothes fit, I don't like it because it's like, I'm just like, I know this is like a crazy like illustration that I'm going to give you. It's like, I have to tuck it in like inside my pants or inside my jeans. And it's just like, Ugh. or like, I know that a shirt won't fit because my arms are so big from all of this that I'm carrying around. And sometimes it's uncomfortable. Like when I go to the gym, like the skin, like on my thighs, it just kind of like flops around. Like it literally just flops around. So sometimes it feels like it's just weighing me down. It's hard to be like very, like run around and feel like free and loose. And just, you know, when you, when you're carrying around this extra skin on you and this is why I'm working so hard to get the weight off because I feel like I'm being weighed down by weight and I feel like I'm being weighed down by skin I feel like my performance can be so much better if I lose the weight and eventually if I lose the skin and when I say performance I'm talking about anything I'm talking about going up a flight of stairs I'm talking about one day going hiking in California because that's what I want to do I'm talking about running more races I'm talking about just being more active with things. Like I want to be active. Like I want to do those things in life that I've never done before. And I want to kind of like show that example and pass that example down to my child. So that's like very important for me. So I kind of like feel like I'm being really held hostage <laughs> in my extra fat and also my loose skin. And I just want to get rid of it. Like as soon as I can, which will take me another year. And I just want to kind of start living, you know, living life, living life. So I'm excited for those changes to come. They'll eventually come. But right now, I just hate it so much. Every time I see it, every time I look at it, I know some people are bothered by it, but a lot of people, you don't hear like a lot of people talking about it and their experiences with it. I don't know if they're like embarrassed or maybe they never really made it to their goal way. I know some people are really scared to get it and. I mean, it just is what it is. You just save up money to get the surgery and bam, it's gone. And I know I kind of like make that sound like a not big deal. I know it is a big deal. It's surgery. Of course, it's a big deal. There are risks that come with that. But it's just like either you live your life being overweight, unhappy, out of breath, possible health implications, or you lose the weight and you just have loose skin. There are ways that you can cope with it. You put baby powder under your folds. You make sure that it's washed and dried properly. You use an antifungal cream if you need to. You use like undergarment compression garments. Yeah, so it's kind of like a lot that you have to do to contain it depending on how much you have. But yeah, 
and then paying for it, you can save up for it. I know also some insurances cover it. Like if you've lost a certain amount of weight, if it's causing you issues as far as rashes or pain or anything like that. I don't know a lot about that part, but whenever I get to that part, you're going to definitely hear about it, okay? Because I'm not the type to like spend more money than, you know, I want to. So that's something that's coming in the future. You'll hear about all of that because I know it's coming, y'all. I really want to get this off of me. So we're going to talk about that in the future. But we're going to transition on to the second thing, okay? So the second thing that I wanted to talk to you guys about is what people are saying or what people are not saying. Please do not let people's words affect you negatively or their lack of words affect you negatively. I'm going to talk about that. So what I mean is I know that there, <laughs> you talk to a lot of people, right? You have friends, you have family, you have coworkers, you have all these people that you interact with, that you meet, that you talk to, that you, you know, know on a daily basis, weekly basis, monthly basis, even just at holidays or whatever, right? So I really haven't had any kind of interactions with people because I don't talk to people, but the only really interactions that I have is like online. That's really it. And honestly, no one really cares. So... <laughs> But I am going to talk a little bit about kind of like what I've experienced in the past. And I know what a lot of you guys um, experience. And the first thing I want to talk about is like haters, like people that are legitimate, like looking at you with envy in their eyes and they say things or they try to like sabotage you. I made a whole video about toxic people on your weight loss journey. Please watch that. Huh. But I also talk about the good people on your weight loss journey, too. But haters they out there i don't think i have any i might i don't know but people that do not want to see you do well they will try to sabotage you or they will talk about you behind your back or they will make you feel not so good about yourself and y'all please do not silence yourself don't feel like you have to tiptoe around and i'm not saying just to talk about losing weight all the time like nobody don't want to hear that all the time but <laughs> If you have some kind of success or some kind of accomplishment or you're feeling good about yourself and somebody is supposed to be your friend, then you should be able to share that with them. If you can't share something as simple as I'm off my blood pressure medication because I lost 30 pounds, I don't want to hear about your weight loss. It's triggering me. OK, you need to find a new friend. Right. Because if you're doing stuff for your health and the betterment of yourself and someone can't talk to you about that or they can't just say, oh, that's great, girl. Congratulations. Keep doing what you're doing. That's good to hear. You don't need them in your life. And I understand they be going through whatever they're going through, but you're also going through something. So if you don't have supportive people in your corner, I don't care what the reason is. It's no reason to have them around because if they won't be in your corner for this or supportive about this, they won't be in your corner or supportive about the next thing. Prove me wrong, okay? Because I've been on this earth a long time. I saw a lot of stuff and I've been around a bunch of shady people, okay? Like I know sometimes it's impossible for you to cut some people off because you may live with them. So how do you navigate those tricky situations? I'm going to defer that to someone who has a little bit more knowledge. If you can, please try to talk to a therapist about that. They can help you to navigate those situations. But my main advice would be to set boundaries with people. Like, tell them what you want or will or won't put up with. Like, just a simple, I don't want to hear that. Or I don't want to talk about that. Please don't talk to me about that. That's not something that I want to talk about right now. No, thank you. Just very simple, not rude, straight to the point. Get your point across. Because you let people run over you and say anything to you, they're going to continue to do that. And at that point, the only person that you have to blame for that is you. So you have to set clear, definitive boundaries with people. And I know that may be harder for some people in your life. Your parents, for example. Like, how do you set a boundary with your parents if you live with them? And especially if you're younger. I don't know. Because me, see me, I, <laughs> look... 
the experiences I've had in life. I don't care. I don't care if you're my mama. Like, I just don't care. And I, and I know that sounds like really rough and tough, especially like if you don't have a parent in your life anymore, you know, they passed away or whatever. But the experiences that I've been through, the way that I've been abused by people, I don't care who you are. No one is going to talk to me any kind of way. No one is going to run over me. No one is going to abuse me. I don't care who you are. That's just how it is for me. Other things might work differently for you, and that's fine. But if you've been in the situations that I've been in in life, you have learned to stick up for yourself. You have learned to be kind, to be empathetic, to be all of that to people. But once they push that button, nah, bro, I'm good. I'm good. I just don't need people like that in my life. And then let's talk about the people that don't say anything. Like you're expecting people to say something or you're expecting people to notice your weight loss or you're expecting people to support you in some kind of way. Just don't. Don't have any expectations of other people's actions. I mean, unless maybe like they're your spouse or somebody like that. But I'm assuming that you've already talked about them and how you expect them to support you on this journey. But like, for instance, you expect people to notice or compliment you or say something. Please don't expect that. Because a lot of people these days are being more cognizant of people's feelings. So they may not want to comment on it. They may feel like it's inappropriate or to some people it's triggering. So they just don't comment on it. They don't want to say anything about your body. Like, and I, I respect that. I feel that. Also, some people may not notice it. If they're around you all the time and you're big and you have a lot of weight to lose, they just may not literally notice it. Like you notice it because you're wearing yourself every day. Your clothes are fitting different. You know, you're dropping sizes or whatever, but they just may not notice it. And then when people do compliment you, just take it and move on. Like, don't think about it. Don't dwell in it. Don't like... Did they mean it this way? Did they mean it that way? I don't, was this like, thank you. And just move on from it, you know? And if you feel like people are like asking too many questions, they getting too nosy, you don't like it, set your boundary. That's not something that I feel comfortable discussing. Or no, I don't want to talk about that right now. Or that's kind of personal, you know? I don't really feel comfortable discussing that. Like you may think it comes off as rude, Believe me, I, I was raised Southern proper. <laughs> you know, it's a lot of things that we don't say or we don't talk about or you don't discuss or whatever, like how your words come across to people. But just say that. Like, don't let people make you feel uncomfortable and make you feel bad about something that you think is really, really good. You're very, very proud of. You've been wanting to do for a really long time. And I kind of think that's all I really want to say about people. Is it? I don't know. Also... People, a lot of people like to give unsolicited advice too. I've noticed that. Just say, okay, and just move on. Like, I mean, you could like get into like why they're totally wrong about what they're saying if you want to, like, but me, I don't have the energy to argue with people because like, if I'm losing weight, apparently I'm, I'm doing something right. I might be doing just a little bit of something right. Like, I don't want your advice. I, I, I really don't. Unless you are my medical professional in my life that knows my health history and knows what I'm doing. I don't care. But I just say, okay, and move on. Or thank you and move on. Or just, oh, okay, and just walk away. Like, <laughs> that may not be good advice, but you have to navigate these situations and what works for you, what's best for you. So, that might not be best for you. It takes a lot of like navigating the situation and finding out kind of like reading the room and also what kind of relationship you have with people. So just take my advice with a grain of salt. So the final thing that I want to talk to you about is something that I also suffer from dealing with my body. I feel like my eyes and my brain have not caught up with my body. So sometimes I feel like my body looks very different than what it actually is. Let me explain that. The way that I see myself is different than what it actually is. And I know sometimes that's very hard for people to like wrap their minds around, but body dysmorphia is real. And I'm not saying that I have that. I've not been diagnosed with that. I don't feel that I have it because I know 
how I look. Like I look in the mirror every single day and I see myself and I see my body. I don't think I really see myself as what it is but I know that I've gotten smaller. Like I know that, like realistically, I can't say that I haven't, okay? Because I see the changes. Sometimes it takes me a bit to see those changes. I know that I've I've reduced my size, like literally. I've had to buy new clothes. Like this that I have on is big, you know? I've gotten rid of a lot of clothes <laughs> in my closet. I bought size 12 jeans, something that I've never done in my whole entire life. Like before you know it, I'll be in the single digits. Yeah, like I literally don't shop the plus size section anymore. Like it's just too big. So I mean, I know that I've gotten smaller, but sometimes I look in the mirror and I just still feel bigger. Like I know my stomach doesn't stick out as much, but then there's the loose skin, you know? I know my thighs aren't as big. And sometimes I look at my thighs and I'm like, my thighs look a lot smaller. But it's just like, the skin is there and it just flaps around and it just gets in the way. Um, my arms, they just I've always been big. So <laughs> nothing really to say about those. But sometimes I just feel very uncomfortable with my body because, and it's not even necessarily the loose skin. It's just hard for me to like see myself as a smaller person because I've just been so massively big for so long. If you've lived in your body for a certain amount of time and you've been a certain size, it's just hard to see yourself smaller. It's hard because sometimes I look at like old videos of me because my husband is crazy and he always like records like little hidden videos of me like doing stupid stuff like singing or something like that. And I see myself, I see myself when I was bigger and I'm like, man, I was really big there. Or like I'll look at like old pictures and you can see it in the face. Like I can see it. Like I look at my passport picture and I see how much bigger I was in that picture. Like when I took my passport photo, I was the biggest ever. And so it's been really difficult for me to really see myself for how I really look. And I know that sounds so crazy, but it's been a struggle. And so this is why I feel like when you think that losing weight is going to like solve all your problems and just make you feel better and just, you may feel better physically because you can move around more, you know, you're off certain medications, you feel physically better. But I think the emotional part is a little bit more difficult to deal with. Navigating relationships with people, navigating relationships with yourself, like emotions, like thoughts like it's a lot and so you know you guys I'm a proponent for therapy so if you can afford therapy if your insurance covers it if you can go to a free clinic or a sliding scale place or if they have a teaching university in your area that does sessions with PhD candidates y'all look into those resources please because we need help right and our friends and family can only help us so much. We can get support from groups and people that are going through what we're going through, but they can only help us so much. So try to get some professional help so that you can navigate your feelings and how you're feeling, because this is more than just a physical journey. This is a very mental and emotional journey. I wish you guys much success. I'm hoping for that ever elusive success for myself. This is the year 2023. We are kicking it off. I hope that you guys will continue on with your journeys. And even if you have to like stop, I hope it's just a pause temporarily, right? I hope that this has been helpful to some people. I just want people to know that they're not alone in the feelings that they feel. And I just want to let you guys know how I'm feeling because I go through you know, a lot of emotions on a daily basis, on a weekly basis, dealing with myself, dealing with my child, dealing with my spouse, dealing with my other family, dealing with my coworkers at my job and stuff. It's a lot. And so I just don't want people to feel like they're alone. I want people to know that it's okay to like not be okay. And it's okay to have like really heavy emotions or even like little things that, you know, People want to say that you should or you shouldn't feel a certain way. 
And don't feel like you can't talk about or you can't discuss or you can't be sad about certain things. You know, don't let people tell you how you should be feeling because it's a lot. Okay. And if someone has never been overweight, obese, lost a large amount of weight, they have no idea what you're going through. They can't tell you how to feel. So I hope that the video has been insightful to some, helpful to some, relatable. <laughs> and um, I hope everyone is successful in the year 2023. If you like this video, make sure that you give it a thumbs up. Also, make sure you're subscribed to my channel so that you can get more videos like this. And make sure you guys always spread kindness in a world full of hate. We need more of that. Make sure to be kind to yourself too. I will see you next time. And thank you, thank you so much for watching my videos. Bye-bye.